Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Greg Bodker. I'm a deputy chief with the Columbus Division of Police Support Services Subdivision. Give you an idea of how this press conference is going to run. Uh, I have a few comments that I'll make regarding uh, Kellyanne Prosser's homicide investigation. After I uh, speak, um, Sergeant Terry McConnell will speak and Deputy Chief Tim Becker will speak. Um, at the end, at the conclusion of the, the uh, press conference, um, anyone up here is available for individual interviews if you'd like to uh, speak with them regarding the case. I'll start with introductions of the people sitting with me up here, uh, the team that solved this case. Sergeant Terry McConnell, Columbus Division of Police, Cold Case Unit Sergeant. Detective Dana Kroom, Columbus Division of Police, Cold Case Detective, and he's the current investigating detective for this case. Deputy Chief Tim Becker, he's the Criminal Investigative Subdivision Deputy Chief. Emma Becker, who is the Columbus Division of Police Crime Lab DNA Section Supervisor. She's also joined in the crowd by Angela Farrington, who's the Director of the Columbus Division of Police Forensic Crime Lab. Hallie Dreyer, Dreyer, she's with BCI Forensic Crime Lab DNA section. Officer Greg Colrich from the Columbus Division of Police Police Net Unit. Sheriff Dallas Baldwin, who at the time was a police officer with Columbus Division of Police. Amanda Reno, she's the Director of Forensic and Genetic Case Management for Advanced DNA. And myself, Greg Bodker, Deputy Chief with Columbus Police. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. On September 20th, 1982, Kellyanne Prosser was abducted while walking through the University of District in Columbus, Ohio, on her way home from Indianola Elementary School. On September 22nd, Kellyanne's body was discovered in a cornfield along A.W. Wilson Road in Madison County. It was determined that Kellyanne had been beaten, sexually assaulted, and murdered. For the next four decades, with the support of Kelly's family, devoted, detectives devoted thousands of hours to the quest for finding Kelly's murderer. Today, nearly 38 years after Kelly was abducted and murdered, the Columbus Division of Police, in partnership with Advanced DNA, announced that the team assembled on each side of me, with the support of Kellyanne's family, have positively and conclusively identified the person responsible for the murder of Kellyanne Prosser as Harold Warren Jarrell, bringing to a close one of CPD's most intense investigations. Warren Jarrell is not currently a suspect in other crimes in Columbus, and he was not mentioned in the original case file. He is deceased. Without the work of the genealogist, Mr. Jarrell may not have been linked to this case. We would like to extend our thanks to the detectives who originally built this difficult case. Imagine in 1982 collecting something that you didn't know would one day exist, DNA. These detectives collected and preserved evidence that would have significant importance as the decades passed and the case was invested. Thank you to Detective Ron Custer who took possession of the case and relinquished that in 2014. He relinquished that to Detective Dana Kroom who took ownership of the case in 2014 as, and is the investigator of record today. This is a case that throughout the years all of CPD wanted to, wanted to solve and a case that affected all personnel on a, on a personal level. Additionally, the Columbus Division of Police would like to thank our numerous law enforcement partners. Some of those partners relentlessly sought this murderer with our detectives. Some of them are the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Franklin County Sheriff's Office, the Madison County Sheriff's Office, the Ohio State Highway Patrol, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, and the Savannah, Georgia Police Department. I would like to point out that in this case, Columbus Police cold case detectives employed two new investigative methods that will be used to solve cold case homicides moving forward. 
One, a podcast titled The Fifth Floor was initiated to distribute case information to a larger group of people. To date, that podcast has reached hundreds of thousands of listeners. Secondly, and more importantly, CPD cold case detectives partnered with Advanced DNA, specifically Amanda Reno and Cheryl Hester, genetic genealogists, to build the family tree of the person that's res that was responsible for Kelly Ann's murder and to provide additional leads for the detectives. At this time, I'd like to have Deputy Chief Becker say a few words. Thanks, Greg. Um, Deputy Chief Botker's contribution in this case um, was far from minimal. He brought advanced DNA to us and enabled us to get to this result. So I'm very grateful for his leadership and his efforts, not only on the, uh, the genetic genealogy, but also on the podcast. So thank you for your leadership. And again, I reiterate, there's a lot of law enforcement officers, um, current um, and past, that never forgot about this case, never lost their passion and desire to solve this case. And without them building the foundation, we couldn't have got to where we are today. It's still a sad day. We can't bring Kelly Ann Prosser back. Um, I wish we could. They wish, I'm sure Sheriff Baldwin wishes they could have back then. This doesn't solve that. However, the next best thing we can do is bring some closure and hopefully bring people to justice. In this case, the suspect is deceased. We can't bring him to the justice system. But I want to let the families of all our other victims know that we are pursuing those cases with the same vigor that we pursue this case. We have a lot of unsolved cases. That doesn't mean we have a lack of desire to solve them. My cold case unit, the rest of my homicide detectives, are building those foundations right now. Maybe the clues are there. Maybe somebody can bring us the clue that helps us solve them. Or maybe it'll be a future technology that brings us the opportunity to solve those cases. In any event, we're going to do everything within our power. We don't let those cases go ever. So if you're out there and you're a murderer and you've got away with this, don't think you've got away with it forever. We are hunting you. And when we get the tools to find you, we will bring you to justice. With that, Sergeant Terry McConnell is going to talk about specific details of this case. Okay, like both chiefs before me said, um, you know, this case was brought to us in September of 1982 when Kelly came up missing, um, walking home from school. So at that time, patrol officers did extensive searching. Um, set up grid searches, searched the area exhaustively for two days. On the second day, a raincoat was found on A.W. Wilson Road that was eventually tied to Kelly, and then that concentrated the search in that area. So on the 22nd, that's when officers and detectives located her body in the cornfield just off of A.W. Wilson Road. So. At that time, the crime scene search unit did an incredible job, the detectives making sure all the evidence was collected and preserved. So over the years, we've continuously looked at that through our CPD crime lab or BCI's crime lab. And uh, DNA evidence was established, I believe, in 2014 or 15 that was eventually entered into a CODIS database with no matches. So in March of this year, we partnered with the Amanda Reno and uh, was able to go back and look at that DNA evidence and develop enough through testing that could be used for genealogical research. Um, very quickly, they were able to come back with a family name and with that family name, we were able to research through the case file. There was nothing specific to that name, but there was a similar name that was provided in a Crime Stopper, an anonymous Crime Stoppers tip in 2014. That tip was followed up on by Detective Custer, and 
but due to the tip being anonymous and the limited information in it, it was not able to be verified. So the name that was in that tip being so similar to the family name that was developed in the genealogical DNA, we started researching those names further and was able to determine that Harold Warren Jarrell was most likely the suspect. And we learned that in 1977, he was charged with abducting an eight-year-old girl from Tamarack Circle on the north side of Columbus. So he was convicted, went to prison on that crime, was released in January of 1982, just months before Kelly's disappearance. So with all of that information, we started researching his family, located several living relatives who were very cooperative in the investigation. We were able to obtain DNA from them that confirmed the link to Harold Warren Jarrell as our suspect. The best part of all of it, once we'd learned that information, was being able to go and speak with Kelly's mother and her sister and let them at least know what had happened. It was unfortunate we weren't able to bring them to justice, but giving them that answer as to what happened to their little girl was um, satisfying. Um, they wanted to be here today, but they thought it was too soon and uh, would be really hard for them to do. Um, Kelly's mom has stayed a very close part of this investigation the entire time. And it, every detective who's worked this case has received cards, letters, notes from her that um, always contained pictures of Kelly and little notes. So they were all difficult to read. Um, Linda gave us a statement to read for the family. I'm probably not going to be able to get through this. I'll do the best I can. Um, she wanted this read on behalf of the family. This is from the Garner family. For almost 38 years, our family has spoken for the one who was silenced and whose young life was cut short, Kelly Ann Prosser. When Kelly Ann left for school the morning of September 20th, 1982, we did not expect our time with her would abruptly end or that our future would change in every way imaginable. One moment we had this dazzling, mischievous eight-year-old little girl. Then suddenly all we had left were memories, photographs that will never age, a calendar marking a dreadful new holiday, a grave, and pieces of Kelly's life stored in a box. Our family has spent many long years waiting for Kelly Ann's murder to be solved, but Kelly's family is not unique. Those who have suffered the murder of their loved one knows how devastating waiting for answers can be. Nor are we the only family who has laid awake at night, hoping and praying that their missing child would return home safely. Today is one of those bittersweet moments that has been a long time coming. Our family is blessed to have finally gotten an answer after nearly four decades on who abducted, sexually assaulted, and murdered, murdered our darling Kelly Ann. While new technology, advanced investigative techniques, and other factors have been an undeniable part of solving this homicide case, the real credit goes to all the local, state, federal, and partnering law enforcement agencies who showed tenacity, dedication, and tremendous teamwork in solving Kelly Ann's case. There are no words to express how deeply our gratitude extends to all of you. We would like to specially recognize the many Columbus Division of Police homicide detectives who have worked countless hours on this case, trying to find Kelly's perpetrator to hold their, that individual accountable for her murder. Most recently, this has been Detective Dana Kroom, his sergeant, and retired detectives Ron Custer, and James Mikowski. Officer Greg Kolarich also contributed by developing a podcast about Kelly Ann's case. Gentlemen, thank you for never giving up. 
Thank you for never forgetting about this innocent child, and thank you for never forgetting that you were working for Kelly Ann. Your perseverance and determination, your caring and professional manner, your patience, diligence, and sacrifices have not gone unnoticed. Columbus is a better place because of your service with the Columbus Division of Police Cold Case Homicide Unit. Please know this, today you have given us the most incredible gift and this gives us hope that other homicide cold cases will be solved. Kellyanne's family is also appreciative of the continued interest by the media with regards to Kellyanne's abduction, sexual assault, and murder case. Although many of you would like to talk with us, please understand that old wounds have been reopened and our family now faces new heartaches. Therefore, as Kelly's family begins this new cycle of healing, we do ask for privacy and we trust that you will respect our wishes. Kelly Ann was our beauty and our love. She sparkled with laughter and her blooming spirit shined amidst the thorns. Her light has been and always will be deeply missed. Today and forever, family and friends will remember our precious little girl. May Kellyanne, in the arms of her beloved grandmothers, Rose and Eleanor, now rest in peace. Linda has really pushed um, hard to make sure Kelly's disappearance and murder did not go unsolved. Um, as I said before, the letters that, that were sent helped motivate all of the detectives. Um, the original detective on the case was Julie Joseph and Robert Britt, and it was followed up by Bill Finneran and Ron Custer, and then Dana Kroom. He's did an outstanding job making sure all of that information that was previously collected was organized, sought through, and uh, was able to provide the information to Advanced DNA and Amanda Reno so that we could get to where we are today. We'll take some questions and then afterwards if you'd like to interview any of the people up here, um, you're welcome. Can you talk quickly about the podcast and um, did any information come from that in helping solve the case? Did jog anybody's memory? So the podcast, we were able to get tips. Um, some, some additional tips came in through Crime Stoppers. Um, a lot of the tips were focused back on previous received tips. Um, there were over 23 persons of interest that were investigated and cleared throughout this investigation over the years. Um, some of those people looked really, really good for this crime, but there was never enough evidence to, to link them. And uh, a lot of the Crime Stoppers tips that we had received early on were focused on those people. And with all the media attention, I think a lot of the tips that came in were just people remembered a lot of that old stuff. Uh, the gentleman, Mr. Gerald, died in Las Vegas. Correct. Is he believed to be a suspect of any crimes in that jurisdiction, to your knowledge? So not specifically to our knowledge. I know they have a case similar to this, but um, right now we don't have any information that links him to that. And is he a suspect in any cases here that do not have DNA evidence to tie? Is he being looked at in any case? Not at this moment. Can you describe his, his connection to Columbus and the, you know, his family here? Did he live here? What was... Yeah, he started out in West Virginia and uh, was involved with a water company in West Virginia and then moved here with family. And he uh, kind of traveled about, but most of, the, most of the 70s and early 80s he was here in Columbus, Ohio. He worked for a local radio station in Columbus and... Um, Kind of several odd jobs throughout too. Oh, 
sorry, go ahead. You mentioned that, you know, so you mentioned the podcast on how that may have helped um, open up this case, and but you've talked, you know, length about advanced DNA and how much they have um, helped with this. Um, what can you say about what they have brought to um, the investigation? So, they were instrumental in solving the case. I mean, if we would not have had the genealogical DNA capabilities, this would still be unsolved today. So, you know, we're grateful for what they bring to, to this partnership. Um, looking forward to working with them in the future. Um, there was one case um, previous to this that we submitted as well. Um, that case is still being investigated. Um, and we're in the middle of a project now to identify as many other cases as we can find that would benefit from the, from the same technology. And like the chief said earlier, we will come, you know, if we are able to get the tools to, to determine who you are, we are going to come find you. Have you seen major, sorry, Paul, um, have you seen major strides um, in DNA and uh, technology? Yeah, all of the DNA um, technology has progressed so quickly over the, especially since 2014, it seems like it changes every day and something new comes in. Um, the genealogical DNA is just amazing and, and especially at how quickly from the time we basically entered into the partnership with, with Amanda, um, I mean, it seems like it was only just a couple of weeks, a few weeks before we were on the path to Harold Jarrell. And, and uh, I mean, sometimes it takes months just to, you know, it used to take months just to get a DNA test back. So, so it really is a, um, a, an amazing feat. How far back did you have to go to be able to find that familial match? I know we've, had, we've seen other high profile cases where they're having to go to third and fourth cousins to try and trace it back. So we're gonna let Amanda speak to all of that. Um, I think she could do it in a way that you'll understand it much better than if I try to. I'd also like to recognize that uh, nearly our entire DNA section from the Forensic Crime Lab in Columbus is here today. That's how important this case is. Um, as well as Lisa Richmond, who her and her father found the raincoat and originally led to the Columbus police um, recovering Kellyanne's body in 1982. Um, these are all people that were integral with this case. Um, Amanda, would you like to talk about the research and how far back we went? To answer your question, um, the DNA cousin relationship that we used for this is approximately a third cousin um, relationship. There were several third cousin relationships that we were reviewing. And was that through um, a database you had through CODIS, 23 to me? I mean, how were you able to develop that? Um, we used GEDmatch and Family Tree DNA, which are the only two databases that allow law enforcement use. How long that takes, that process is. I know, I know touch on it, but how long from the initial uh, DNA sample to going through, how long did that take? The DNA sample, when it's sent to the lab for this type of processing, can take anywhere from a couple days to a couple of uh, months to turn around a uh, file to be used, at which time when we are provided with the DNA file, it is all dependent on the DNA matches that are available. And if the matches are close, sometimes the case can go much quicker. Um, usually when we have third cousin matches the, or fourth cousin matches, it does take much longer to work through this process. And it can take anywhere from a couple of days to uh, many, many months. And some of them are pending and waiting for better matches. As I said uh, afterwards, um, anyone up here is available for uh, interviews. Um, we appreciate you coming and covering Kelly's case. Uh, thank you very much. That concludes the press conference.